Helen Shores was born on May 3, 1941 to attorney Arthur and Theodore Shores. Helen and her younger sister Barbara grew up in the shadow of segregation which their father publicly fought. It was not easy for me being a little girl here in Birmingham because I was so rebellious. I rebelled at it and everything. So I constantly stayed in trouble. As I got older, I realized that there were restraints that were placed on, on, on me in terms of things I could do and things I couldn't do, mainly because of the, the laws of segregation. When Helen was just 14 years old, her father took on the landmark case successfully gaining admittance for Arthurine Lucy to become the first African-American student at the University of Alabama. If you got on a streetcar, there were boards. One side said white, the other side said colored. Well, all the colored always sat in the back. And even though there might not have been any whites on the streetcar, but there were seats, empty seats. The board was there. And I remember getting on, moving the board. I just moved it up one seat. I was about eight sat down and I beckoned for my mother to come sit down and she did. She continued to stand, stand up. And when I got home, you know, I got a weapon. In college, Helen continued to take a passionate approach to integration. At Fisk University, I took part in the Nashville demonstrations, sit-in demonstrations led by Diane Nash. We'd, we'd go to a lunch counter and sit down, and they immediately close the place down and tell everybody they have to get out. And we'd just run to another place and uh, sit down, and they close that down. And some of us, they loaded us up in paddy wagons and took us downtown. I never will forget calling my dad, telling him I was in jail. I wasn't really in jail. They didn't really jail all of the students. They just, they put us in this holding place to school officials could come down there and vouch that we wouldn't be doing that again or something. But that didn't stop them. After graduation, Helen married Bob Lee and moved to California to start their life and family together. She went on to obtain her master's in clinical psychology from Pepperdine University. But back in Birmingham, the fight for human rights was intensifying. During the summer of 1963, the Shores' home in Dynamite Hill was bombed twice. There were some 50 bombings in the neighborhood where I live. Unsolved, 50. I begged my parents after the church was bombed in particular, I begged them to move to California, that this was not a place that was safe for them to, to live. Um, and my dad said, no, this is where his work was. In 1971, the pull of family brought Helen back to Birmingham. She became instructor of clinical psychology at UAB and then director of clinical mental health services at the Jefferson County Department of Health. She also provided her counseling and mental health expertise to the YWCA's Family Violence Project, championing the rights of abused women and children. Then, at age 44, Lee decided to follow in her father's footsteps and earned her law degree from Samford University Cumberland School of Law. She served as magistrate for the city of Birmingham and then joined her father's law practice. From 1996 to 2000, she also served on the Alabama State Ethics Commission. And in 2003, Judge Lee became the first African-American woman to serve in the civil division of the Circuit Court of Jefferson County. Whether in the courtroom or among the many organizations she has served, whenever human rights were challenged, Judge Lee stepped forward to champion justice for all. Over the decades, she hasn't just been a witness of our history. Judge Helen Shores Lee has helped shape our history. Things change. 
people change, conditions change, and somehow I, I felt that there was a plan for me. And some people don't believe in that, but that there is a plan, and when God has a plan for you, you know, you need to listen and follow that plan.